but they're so effed up. They think tomorrow is going to be like yesterday. And we're cruising into one of the biggest financial catastrophes in world history. Just look at, look at, look at what you cannot see. See, the reason you want to read is to see what you cannot see. Well, it's really simple. It's because the dollar is getting weaker. So I, I read about that in Rich Dad Poor Dad. The savers were losers. And so my family, God bless their hearts, they all have the college degrees, and they save money, and they have a 401k, and they have a job, and we're all fat, dumb, and happy. But And I don't have their advanced degrees. That's the difference. So they're smarter than me because they have advanced degrees. So what happens with when they print money the purchasing power of the dollar goes down. So that's why it's not that gold's got more expensive or silver gets more expensive or Bitcoin gets more expensive. The US dollar gets more worthless. And again, that's what this book's about here. The Creature from Jekyll Island is about how the Federal Reserve Bank was created in 1913. But you know what else was created in 1913 besides the Fed? IRS, tax service. And when you understand how this whole thing came together, you'll understand this book here, The Communist Manifesto. So in 1965, when I was 18 years old, I went to school in New York. I went to military school. I had, I had nominations to the Naval Academy and Merch Marine Academy. I took the Merch Marine Academy, and our, our economics teacher had us read this book here. Hmm. When I read this book here, I said, oh, my God, I hate to say this, my family are Marxists. Most people are Marxists today. They don't know it, though. Let me give you one specific example. I'm not saying they're bad people. You know, I get, I get my ass in trouble never saying this stuff. But I said, do you believe in paying taxes? Well, yes, we have to pay taxes and all that. And what Marx said was that a graduated income tax was essential for the spread of communism. America was a tax-free nation, 1773, the Boston Tea Party. Also, what he says, workers of the world unite. But also, this guy, Klaus Schwab, someday you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. It was abolition of private property. Hmm. So your daughter, by taking gold, silver, or Bitcoin, or you know whatever is real, she's taking control of her property. It's for real. But if she's saving the dollar, they're printing more and more and more and more. Let me say it one more time. The national debt, the interest on the national debt of America is now $1 trillion and climbing. You're going to save more dollars? Are you freaking nuts? But that's how stupid people are. I have a college degree. I have a master's degree. Why don't you wake up? Your college degree is a piece of toilet paper. Just a big, uh, you have no idea. A big battle of mine is personal, really personal. People don't study today. They don't read. They think if I go to college, I have a college degree, that's enough. And that's why our country's in serious trouble. More than the country, it's our our people are in serious trouble. They don't study. They just get told what to do. And the, you know what I mean? They they don't delve. Like this thing here, I, I read three times. The Creature from Jekyll Island. Yeah. I say it opens your, mind, opens your mind up. You go, holy mackerel. Well, it goes back to this book right here, The Creature from Jekyll Island. And I'm a, I'm a lot older than you are. But once I understood this book, kind of my my formative years made sense. Like in 1971, I was on, I was in Vietnam. I was a Marine pilot flying these things in Vietnam. And I went down three times. And while I was in Vietnam, my rich dad wrote me and says, hey, Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. I went, what? What does that mean? He goes, watch out. The world's going to change. So I'm flying off a carrier in Vietnam. And I said, what does that mean? What does that mean? He took the dollar off the gold standard. Well, what it meant was the dollar became debt, became an IOU from the US government. And Clay, the reason I, I work and I talk and I speak and I do what I'm doing is most people are kind of effed up. I mean, they've got their heads so far up their butts, they can't even see. I'm a Marine. You know, we say we say a lot nicer than that. But they're so effed up. They think tomorrow is going to be like yesterday. And we're cruising into one of the biggest financial catastrophes in world history. Just look at, look at, look at what you cannot see. See, the reason you want to read is to see what you cannot see. So when I'm reading like the Fed report and all this stuff here, 
our interest on our debt is now a trillion dollars. So this is 2024, August 2024. The interest on the U.S. debt is $1 trillion. And what these guys are going to do is they're just going to print more money to pay for that trillion dollar debt. Wow. And our, our national debt is $35 trillion, but total unfunded liabilities are like $155 trillion. And so we're in serious trouble, Clay. And the average person still thinks, well, tomorrow would be like yesterday. My family, oh, my, my daughter's in college. You know, she's a straight A student. I'm going, Jesus, they don't know anything. Oh, extremely liquid, gold and silver. I'm, you know, I can be in and out of it in, in you know, a day. It, you know, like, like some, I'm, I'm transferring cash a lot of the times. I'm buying this, buying that. It takes so long to wire cash. But I, if I need, I have gold, I want some cash. I just go to my gold dealer and gives me cash. Okay, so let me go back. BRICS hands from Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. And there um, is also the Chinese have a Belt and Road project, which they're trying to unite the whole world against the dollar. So BRICS is not just a name. They're doing their best to destroy the dollar. So let's say they announce a gold-backed crypto. That's the BRICS currency. Trillions, maybe quadrillions of U.S. dollars will come back to the U.S., and we will see hyperinflation here. All those little dollars that people have been printing will come back to America and you can't buy anything with it. So your savings get wiped out, your value of your house gets wiped out. It's because it's fake money. Mm. You know, the US dollar is fake. So if and when that happens, and I think it's gonna happen sooner than later, when the BRICS come back with a gold back crypto, the dollar is toast. And you're going to wish you had more gold and silver and Bitcoin or real estate, something that's real. You want something that's real because the dollar is fake. Well, all you have to do is look at the budget of the United States. You know, this guy, uh, I'm not Republican or Democrat, but this guy, Biden and Kamala, they did more to damage the American economy than any people in history. Like I'm an oil guy. I, I invest in oil. I don't invest in oil stocks. I invest in oil. So when Biden came into power, his very first act, and watch what a person does, not what he says. Now, Biden can't say very much anyway, but his first act was he cut the Keystone Pipeline. When he did that, I was selling oil. I have oil, oil in North Dakota, Louisiana, Texas. Oil was selling for $30 a barrel the day that Biden came to office. And immediately, oil went from $30 to $130. And that's when this book here came in. In 1965, I read this book. Biden and Kamala are Marxists. They're Marxists. They're, they're going to create this gap so big between rich and poor. So you're going to have so many people in Tulsa and me, me in Phoenix or in Hawaii where the, where the number of poor is going to go through the roof because they're still hanging on to U.S. dollars. Hmm. Remember this, what Sheckman says it best. He's a guy's a genius. He says, when, when they go to the gold standard and the BRICS currency, the dollars will come back on shore. And you're going to see hyperinflation like we've never seen before. But like the Weimar Republic of uh, you know Germany back in the 1930s and 1820s. So we're in very precarious shape. And I, I keep saying to people, don't think tomorrow is going to be like yesterday. I would prepare for what's coming. Just look at this, $1 trillion dollars is taken from the treasury just to pay the interest on our debt. And our debt went past 35 trillion. We're printing a trillion dollars every 90 days. Mm. Now you don't have to go to college to know you can't keep doing that. That's like that's like me saying to you, oh, okay, I don't have to worry. I'm using my credit card to pay for, pay for my house. There's something wrong with that. You know, that's what people are doing. They're taking their credit cards out and they're trying to buy a house with it. I've done that, but I don't recommend it. Anyway, um, it, the whole thing is debt right now. That's, hap that's what happened in 1971. Another guy saying that is Ray Dalio. He says, not only is it, not only is it just a dollar in trouble, but it's the advent of China coming online. China is going to threaten our power all over the world. So we're in serious trouble as the U.S. And that's why I appreciate you know, being on your show and all this, just to give my little two bits out there. But my family won't listen to me. They go, I have a college, I have a master's degree. I'm going, so what? So what? 
So what? They have no money. I don't think it makes any difference. I mean, ideally, you could have all the gold you want, but silver is a strategic metal. It's used in the military. So right now, every time you hear the, you know, what's going on terribly, Ukraine and Russia and what's going on in Hamas and Gaza, every day, silver is being blown up. Plus, on top of that, I, dri I drive an EV, and that's batteries. And I just, I just bought a lithium mine in Canada because of the battery. So there's things you can do, but I'm buying what I consider things that the government cannot print. Another, another thing I'm investing in, because you're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is I'm buying cattle. And, you know, you can't print a cattle. <laughs> and people eat those things. So I'm investing in what's real, hmm. not the dollar. So I don't, I'm not saying don't save dollars. It's called liquidity, as you say. But I would save for the future um, gold, silver, or Bitcoin. Bitcoin, I think, is a savior right now. Bitcoin is like the life raft being thrown to us. In other words, if you buy Bitcoin, it goes up in value. You take a dollar, it goes down in purchasing power. So Bitcoin is the easiest thing right now. I think they're about $60,000 per coin. I only have 60 of them, but I was buying at 6,000. And uh, it's, it's a life raft because the Titanic called the United States is going down. They don't get a commission. If they got a commission, they'd sell it. So that's why Bitcoin going to an ETF was good for those people. You know, they, uh, I don't, I don't have much respect for them. They're smart people, but they're sell, selling you stuff and they have to sell you stuff. They make a commission off of, I don't make any commissions telling you to buy cattle. You know, I just like cattle. So I, I'll tell you straight without trying to make money off of it. Hmm. So I, my friends, I have several friends who are financial planners, and they, they run into the same problem. They said, people are so effing stupid. They just, they're like cattle. They just want to be told what to do, and they'll do it. Hmm. They cannot think. And the, I think the worst thing, Clay, is I'll say this over and over again, is that people think because I have a college degree, they're safe. That's my family. Hmm. I have a college degree, I have a real estate license, you know, it's paper, it's fake. They put their lives in fake, fake college degrees, fake licenses, financial planners. I'm going, why don't you get some cattle? Why, why don't you get some corn? Why don't you get some of this oil? <laughs> it's even worse than that, Clay. It's like, it's, the word's called hypothecation. When you buy a, a silver or gold ETF, they don't have to have the gold and silver there. Just selling you stuff that's not there. That's how that's how rigged Wall Street is. They can sell you gold and silver that's not there, and they can just play the futures con. You know, they're buying gold and silver in the future market. So I just don't trust Wall Street. I don't trust my government. You know, the two tours in Vietnam, I stopped trusting my government, and uh, that's why Trump and I are really good friends. Uh, I just watch what he does, not what he says. Hmm. And, man. But the thing is, I would get what's real, whatever that is to you. Like I go to Cobb, uh, Oklahoma, Fort Cobb, and uh, it was one of the, I, I thought Fort Cobb was one of the most interesting places I'd been to simply because I think Walmart moved in there and it killed Fort Cobb. Do you know what I mean? The whole town died. Mm. Just because Walmart went in there at better products, better prices. So I, I sit there watching what's going on in America. Meanwhile, you know, the globalization, we're shipping our, our, our jobs and our businesses over to China. And that's why Trump is so anti-China. I'm not saying you should be anti-China, all of that, you know. But we better watch what's going on. Watch what they're doing, not what they're saying. And this guy, Walls, who's running as Kamala's vice president, there's this book here I wrote it's called Who Stole My Pension? Walls, who's the governor of Minnesota, I believe, his hands are so dirty that he's been stealing money from the teacher's pensions. And that's Kamala's buddy. So I'm just saying, watch what they do, hmm. not what they say. So Walls, is his hands are dirty. Kamala's never been to the border, but she's a border czar. 
I mean, like, you got to be kidding me. You can't make this stuff up. Obama, he was like, Obama was the guy that pumped the student loans. So today's student loans are one point six trillion dollar problem. Thank you, Barack and Michelle. You just f the whole generation of college students, you sons of bitches. <laughs> no, so Watch, I no, it's it's a good it's a good concern, but be stay away from numismatic. Numismatics are rare collectibles. Like this is an eighteen nineteen silver quarter, you know whatever it is. But you've got to find somebody you trust. But not only that, hopefully they're older than thirty, because the guys who are my age have been through the ringer. And the reason they're buying gold and silver is because of religion. They've seen 1971 when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard and they became, you know, they drank the Kool-Aid on gold and silver. The moment 1971 happened, thanks to Nixon and Nixon opened the door to China, America was hosed. Our jobs flowed over to China, our, our money's our money screwed. And now the bricks are coming on strong. So it's either going to be a very good time for some people, but also a very bad time for America. It's very mm. sad.